This video is going to cover the topic of ratio tape diagrams. Be sure the date and topic are at the top of your page. The essential question for this video is how can we use tape diagrams to model and interpret ratios? Before we look at some tape diagrams, we just want to make sure we know what a tape diagram is. And a tape diagram is a visual model and it uses rectangles to represent the parts of a ratio. Either the part to part or a part to whole can be used, can be researched by using tape diagrams. Tape diagrams require a bit of attention to detail as you set it up, otherwise they aren't particularly useful. So you want to make sure that you're careful as you're setting these up. I'm going to start with this example where we have two students and we know the ratio of marbles between them. David clearly has two marbles to every three marbles that Justin has. However, in total, we know that they have 35 marbles. They don't just have the five that we see. The question is, how many marbles does each student have? I'm going to show you how I'm going to visually show this with a tape diagram. I've modeled the portions of marbles for both David and Justin, and I was careful that the rectangles are uniform in size and are lined up on the left-hand side. That's going to make it easier for me to see what I'm looking for. On the right-hand side, I've also recorded that there are a total of 35 marbles. It's clearly visual, visible now to see that the students together have five rectangles worth of marbles, and the total number of marbles is 35. If I take my 35 total marbles and divide it by the five rectangles that I have here, or squares in this case, I know that each one of these squares is going to represent seven marbles. Since David has two of these, I know he must have 14 marbles. And since Justin has three of these, I know he must have 21 marbles. And a quick check, 14 plus 21 does make the 35 total. I'm able to use this tape diagram to see how many marbles they each have, even though the ratio that I started with was a simplified version of the real data. Let's try another example. So in an election, there was a vote for a school bond and the ratio of voters who said yes to those who said no was seven to five. So according to this ratio, if we had a room of 36 people, could we figure out how many voted approximately for the school bond? Well, we'll use our tape diagram to find out. I've set up my tape diagram with my ratio, and once again, I was mindful to line things up here to the left and to use the spaces or the grid spots on my grid paper. I have seven yeses, so seven boxes for yes and two for no, and I know that there were a total of 36 people. So I know that these boxes, let's see how many there are, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 36 people are being represented by 12 boxes. And if I use that information, that tells me that each one of these rectangles or squares represents three people. So if I want to know how many people voted for the school bond, I would be able to say, well, each of these counts as three people, and I would be able to say how many people total voted for the school bond. And that would of course be yeses. That would be three, seven times. So there would have been 21 votes for yes. And something else that's neat that you can do here is if you wanted to know how many more people voted for the proposal, you could say, oh, right here, these are the kind of extra boxes. This tells me that nine more yes votes in the room. So there were nine more people who voted yes. So there's actually a bunch of different information we can see. We can see how many said yes, how many said no. We can see the difference between the two. There's a lot of information we can find. We can also use tape diagrams to help us look at ratios in different ways. So the other two examples, I told you the total number of votes or people or whatever it was, and then we looked to see the different pieces. But we can actually use tape diagrams to find the total as well. So if we know that there are some 7th graders, right, we don't know how many, and some 8th graders, again, we don't know how many in the band class, and we know that there's a ratio of 5 to 3, 
That means the first number, seventh graders, is five. The second number, eighth graders, is three. I can set up this table diagram to show my ratio of five to three. And now here's what's different. We know there are six more seventh graders than eighth graders. We don't know the total. We don't know how many seventh graders there are. We don't know how many eighth graders there are. There's a lot missing. But what I can do is say, all right, well, this is where I see the more, right? And I know that the more is six kids. So these two squares equal six, which means one of these little squares must equal three because those are the two extra, right? The two boxes that are on the seventh grade line that are not on the eighth grade line. And then I can say, oh, well, that means if that's three, all of these are three. And if those are three, then these are three, right? And so I now know a whole bunch of information. I now know that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total spaces. And each one represents three kids. So there must be 24 total. I also know that of those, five of them have seventh graders. So those 15 are seventh graders. And three of them are the eighth graders. So that's nine eighth graders, right? So I was able to look at this and I didn't know how many total kits there were, but with the information I had, I was able to deduce it and figure it out. Okay, now it's your turn, right? So here's a question. At a dog park, there are four large dogs for every three small dogs. Oh, that should say dogs there. So this would be a ratio of four to three of large to small. And there are 36 dogs total. I want you to draw a tape diagram showing that ratio and showing how you would calculate how many small dogs there are. And be sure that I can see that picture, or, um, see that answer when I check your notes. Remember that the essential question for this video was how can we use tape diagrams to model and interpret ratios? I really love tape diagrams. I think they're a great visual tool and we'll be using them a bunch together, um, but be sure to write down any questions that you have before we meet in class.